testing. Okay, okay. Testing one, two, three. Testing one, two, three. Hi everybody, welcome to Handmade Studio. I'm Cheryl Ham Woodlock and this is Alfred. And today we're talking about mandalas, the type of tiles you could use, and how and why, how and when and how to put it all together. So stay tuned and we'll see you soon. <laughs> what is a mandala? A mandala is actually a representation of the universe. It's the cosmos. Often they have symbols which are used in certain cultures. But today, what we're actually going to do is we're going to create a circular pattern using some very simple tiles and we're going to create a reoccurring pattern to make your mandala journey easy and really rewarding. Stay tuned. The tiles that I've got here, I've actually collected from Sci Mosaics. So I will give you that link so you can see where Sci Mosaics is. Sci Mosaics has some great tiles. So first of all, to do this little pattern here, we've got a whole heap of tiles and these are petals. So they come in a range of, I think there's around about 12 different colors. And I've got some lovely purple ones here. And they come in large, small, and medium. So there are three different sizes and they're what I've used on my mandala today. So that is the motif that we're going to be using from these petals from Sci Mosaics. The other thing that I have used is very tiny tiles. So they're under one centimeter, which means going around the circle, I don't have to worry about keystoning, which is fantastic for beginners. So these little glass tiles, so they're little glass tiles, they're under a centimetre, so going around makes your job in cutting and no worries about keystoning, so we don't have big gaps around here. The other tile that I've got is a little bit larger and a little bit um, higher, and that's also from, these are all from Sci Mosaics at the moment, and that's just over a centimetre, so that's the border here, another tile. The other ones I've got are these tiles they're on a uh, paper backing they're just on one and a half centimeters and i've used those for the border and going around so there's some other tiles from Sci mosaics i've also got vitreous tiles so i'm using these vitreous tiles from Sci mosaics now the back of these are really awesome and they're fantastic to cut so i'm going to give you a little picture and you can see what i have been using The other thing that I have used is this glass and these are circles, pre-cut circles, which are make your life so much easier. So we've got mirror glass and this is from Mandela. So in Australia, we have Mandela. You can use a cheaper variety. Now, the cheaper variety, which I have here, they are slightly thinner, which is okay, but they're the cheaper brand. So you can get these and they're often sold at the $2 shops. So you can get those. Um, the other thing, yes, I've actually got some circle tiles. So these are buttons, circular tiles. They're on a mesh and that is also what I have used in this mandala. The tools that you're going to need today for this workshop, you're going to need glass nippers because we are using a variety of glass and vitreous tiles. The simple glass nippers are these ones. These are between around about $25 and $30. They are just a simple hinged nipper. They will do the job, but my go-to for me is the bread and nippers. So these will make it cutting really, really easy. So any wheeled glass nipper is going to do the job for the glass tiles. We also have the porcelain tiles, so the little round penny porcelain tiles of these, and they're going to need the straight edge tile nippers. So these are the ceramic straight edge tile nippers. You can use the circular tile nippers, but you're going to blunt your blade. So these are the straight edge tile nippers that we are going to use on our ceramic circles. They're a single hinge and I get these from Mitre 10. They're around about $25 to $30. But for those of you who find cutting porcelain tiles, which these um, round little pennies are, 
These are the compound nippers. They're a lot easier to cut and they give a real, they make cutting porcelain really, really easy. So these are my go-to and I do have another video on why I use these compound nippers. So they make cutting really easy. The other thing that you're going to need, because this is a round circle, you will need to be able to draw this up. So you will either need a compass. Now, a lot of you haven't seen a compass and we haven't used them since we've been at school. But for doing mandalas, they make the job really easy. One edge has, this is where the pencil is. So the pencil sits in here in that area there and this is the pin so the pin sits in the board and then you swing that around to create your circles which makes your design making a lot easier if you don't have one of these and you can buy them fairly cheaply at your news agents especially if you like doing mandalas i recommend you invest in one of these it'll make your job a lot easier but if you want to do this you don't have a compass what you can do is just use a variety of circles See, so if you don't have a compass, you can use a variety of different size circles. So I'm just using lids of my containers to create circles and that will also do the job. When you're just a beginner and you're designing your mandala, keep your pattern really simple. The simpler the pattern, the easier it is going to be filling up this mandala motif. The more intricate the pattern, the harder it's going to become. So for beginners, let's keep this really simple and let's get started. The tools that I'm going to be using to draw this up, I've actually got two different colored sheets of paper. I've actually got a cream white piece of paper and I've got a black sheet of paper. Now I really like using the black because when I place my tiles on it, the colors tend to pop and I usually use black grout when I'm actually filling in my mandala. But if you're not too sure, go with the white and then we can go from there. We're going to create the pattern. So the first thing we're going to do is use the compass. I'm also going to do a um, rule the line across the diagonal and that way I will get the center of this piece of paper. Now I'm going to cut, make, I'm going to make the mark on the diagonal. Again, on the diagonal. And that's the center. That is the center of my mandala going to just mark now I will be using this flower motif I'm going to be using the large one so I want to make sure that this actually fits in here so I'm going to make it slightly larger put my pin in the center of the paper and then mark around so that's my first circle Volatile, which is one centimetre, or I can go one and a half centimetres. I would like to go the larger one because this one is going to go around the in. I think I want to do that around the inside. So I'm going to do one centimetre. So I'm going to make sure that I've got enough space again for that tile going around. Go around a couple of times just to make sure that you don't lift up that pin. There you go. So we've now got that little space of the one and a half centimeters. I don't really need to do every line for that mosaic. You can if you want, if you're not sure. So we can keep adding the circles going around and that will keep your guideline. Make sure that you know what your guideline is. Now, if I measure this, it is one centimeter. I can do another centimeter, mark that. My border is going to be larger again, but if I have enough circles, that gives me an idea. I'm also going to be using this motif, so that motif will sit around up to there. So that gives me enough and then I can worry about the border. So I've now got a rough guideline of where I want to go. And that is the start of our mosaic. 
These are the porcelain tiles that are petals. We have the large, medium, and where are the small ones? This is the small one. It's up to you to work out what size you want to put in here, but I'm actually going to put in the larger petal first, and I think that's going to be the easiest to put in. So I'm just going to put it on the line going out. Then I'm going to do another one in the middle. And this is where you could have drawn another line in. That's possibly a little bit too small. Does the medium work better? The medium sits in better. So I'm going to use the medium tile. That fits in. We're then going to do our border. Is these tiles on the backing. To get rid of this backing, what you do is they have been soaked in water and I can lift this up and the tiles just come off. I put these tiles onto a cloth to dry them out and then I can use them. So the paper and the adhesive, once you immerse it in water, the glue dissolves and then you've got your tiles ready to go. Now in using these tiles this way, if I put them around, what we're going to find is that we've got quite a large gap in between here. But to make that gap smaller, if I cut each tile in half, that gap will be minimized. So the, let me show you. I've got my tile, got my nippers, snap. And by cutting it in half, the gap, that big triangle is not as obvious. And that is the beauty of using square tiles and I don't have to keystone. I don't have to worry about keystoning so much so that the gap is nowhere near as obvious. And we keep going around. Now I've done half. One is the one and a half centimeters without being cut and we've got a largish gap here. The other ones have been cut, these tiles have been cut in half, so the gap is minimal. So it doesn't, you don't get that big V. It is a personal preference. You might like having the tiles without being cut, or you might have that one. It's up to you. The next thing I'm going to do is cut these circles. And this is mirror that is going to be cut Again, I can't use my straight edge nippers because they're going to shatter the mirror. So what I'm going to use is my glass edge nippers, put them in the middle and snap. And that's going to give me my circle motif around the edges. So hold them in the middle and snap. We talked about the flower motif to make the mosaic simple. These are the petals. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put these petals around the corners, going around through here. Now I haven't done the line in the center, but I can measure that up. So I know where the center is. going to use the middle for the motif. Mm -hmm. 
all of our yellows are now in place. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a border using some bigger tiles. So I'm going to do the outside border now. And this is where these are one centimeter tiles. They're a little bit thicker than these uh, eight mil tiles. But they're going to do beautifully around the edge. It doesn't matter that these are slightly thicker. Um, we're going to be able to grout that without a problem. It's not like we're going to, I'm going to be using this as a paper, so everything has to be flat. So we can just go around the border now. The other thing I'm trying to do is have around about two millimeters between each tile, not a large gap. If the gap is too large, you will end up seeing only grout. So try and keep your gaps between your tiles at a not too close together because you still want to be able to get your grout in, but wide enough so you can actually get that grout in and protect the glue underneath. I've now done the border on the outside. I can start filling in on the inside with my tiles and I've got all of these green tiles here which are the just under eight mil um, the eight mil uh, millimeters and I'm going to put these around now I don't have to fill up the whole lot I just want to get a feeling for how these look and see if I am happy with the design so let's go around As you can see, we're going to go into the next line and I'm just going to make sure that these petals don't interrupt that line so I can then do my next row. And I'm going to offset my next row, which means that the tiles are not going to, the lines where they cross, this going down is not in the line with that. If we do this, we're going to have lines going straight through so i'm trying to offset them like that so we're going to have all the tiles offset so the main it focuses going around not down now i just wanted to show you what would happen if we continued to have these lines in line going that way and it would be an odd pattern. And as we go in, the circle gets smaller and these gaps get closer. So it doesn't quite work as a pattern. So it is easier to remember to offset them. And I'm going to leave a gap here because I can trim that when I glue these down, after I glue these down, and I'll show you what I mean later in the video. How to trim your edges so everything fits in nicely. And I'm just going to pull that down so that's in line with that, and that will make it easier to fill in that tile. The other thing that I have done is I work on a board. The board means that I can turn this around so I can see it from all angles. The other thing that's really good about working on a board is that if you need to free up your table because you've got to do something else, you can make and take the board away and put it in a safe place for later on. So that is another trick and that will make your making mosaic, <laughs> that tip will make making mandalas a lot easier. Three hug a lawnmower in the back. Ah! <laughs> okay. We've finished most of our mosaic, but I did leave some of the areas free. And the reason is that I'm going to show you how I fit in the tile into these little tricky corners. 
what I have done is that I've created this line going around here and around there and keeping that gap at different spaces so they're not going directly in a line but I have these gaps here I could have pushed all the tiles over but I would still end up with gaps so I'm trying to keep that even and that space even there now I need to fill that in and that tile doesn't fit so I need to mark it what I am going to do is I've got a permanent marker and I'm going to show you how I go about this what I'm going to do is I've got piece of blue tack and that's going to go over that tile under the tile the tile's going to then sit over that flower so that's the line of the flower and I'm continuing that line through that flower but what I'm going to do is cut a little bit more off and that shows me that grout space so I can now lift that up get my glass nipper put my nipper over that you don't always get the right cut let's see how that fits I'm going to get my tweezers oh, it fits in and now we can see how that fits into place and we've got that little gap that works really well let's do the next one get our blue tack place that directly over the top that way you can see the line mark the line of the flower that petal now I need to mark remember I've got to mark that smaller that's going to be this part is actually going to be my grout line so again take that blue tack off grab your nipper and cut it now it doesn't always cut where you want it to go. Let's hope that I've got the right cut. And <laughs> they're slippery little suckers. Okay, let's see if that cut actually fits. Use my tweezers, move that over. Now this seems really quite um, uh, fiddly work, but it makes a big difference when you do it well. Now, the next space is going to be really, really difficult. So what I'm going to do is, let's have another crack at this. Get your blue tack on there, put it over. And this is where I'm actually making a decision that that line is absolutely fine. So we're going to include that line. This is the line I'm going to use. So I'm going to put that line through there, which is my flower. And now I'm going to do my grout line. So that's my grout line. Again, nipper. Oops, make sure we know what we're cutting. I like to sometimes check twice so I know that this is the line that I'm actually cutting that's the line I'm actually cutting so I'm going to turn it around make it easier to cut snap take this out whoops oh that's turned upside down we'll have to turn that the right way It's fiddly work doing this last bit. And let's see. So that now sits in. Well, so we've now got this nice line transition. I've got a little bit of a gap here, but I'm not overly worried by that little gap there. It still works. Let's do the other side. Again, pop your tile. Make sure you've got it the right way up so you don't get that messed up. Put it on top. Make sure you've got that gap between there. Put in that petal. So that's my petal. And that's, this is my grout line. 
and I'm going to use this one. So we can take that one, that's the one that we're going to use. Take off the blue tack. And I'm hoping this cut works. Yes. That cut works and ah, it's moving around, but that looks fine there. The next one. Oops, that's upside down. Make sure I've got it the right way up. That's the shiny side up. Sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. Again, make sure you have enough gap between that tile. Make sure it's not butted up. Look directly over it. That's what we're doing here with the video. I'm looking directly over it. Do your line of the petal and then your grout line. That will make things a lot, lot easier for you to know where you're cutting. Give that a little tick because that's the piece that you're going to be using. Now this is a permanent marker. Remember that permanent marker will come off if you use methylated spirits. I hope that's what you call it overseas. Pop that in and that's looking great now remember this one is a real tricky one so let's have another go put your blue tack i've got the space between that tile remember my grout line is really important i've got my grout line through there going to put that cut there and i'm going to do my Grout line cut through here. So tick the area that you're going to use. That will make, that's a nice little reminder. And now take the backing off. And when they're small, they are tricky. Nip. And now I can try and grab it and place it in. And that looks fantastic. The next thing I'm now going to do is I'm going to glue these in before they go missing. So what I am going to use is I picked this up from Anissa Sharif. She actually uses blue tack on a um, chopstick and she makes a little point and that point is means I can pick this up and I'll show you in a tick. Now I've got a baggie here just going to take off that sticky tape that meant that the was fresh and I'm using a mastic adhesive so I'm just going to pop a little bit of mastic adhesive onto that oh. and that came off just use my tile and put that around And that fits in that. All right, just putting a little bit of mastic adhesive into that place. So I've just used the toothpick to get that in. Now I can use that. And this means that I don't get the mastic adhesive everywhere so much. So I'm going to pull this one out as well. Just a little bit. Place that down. Sometimes you might need another toothpick just to get that to settle. Put a little bit more in. This is where it is tricky. There's no easy way to fill in those gaps. Um, you can put it on the tile, but the tile's rather small, so I don't want to get the glue everywhere. Now I'm going to pick up the tile pop that in and that is done now I can use the toothpick I'm just going to give that a wipe get that clean again and I can just clean around this tile the mastic glue will come off without any issues but if you're using a cementous adhesive you need to make sure that you don't get 
too much glue on your tile. So that's done. Now I can go to this area and we're good. <laughs> so Alfred and I are saying thank you so much for watching. We'll see you later. Bye. You gonna say bye, Alfred? Goodbye. <laughs>